Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Playful Humans podcast. I'm your host, Mike Montague, and my guest this week is a coach and consultant. Her name is Jen Abels, and you can find her at jenables.com, where she does all kinds of fun, creative things, helping people live their best life. And the show here is brought to you by Playful Humans, where we have a little more fun, flow, and fulfillment in our lives by getting together as a community and having fun rediscovering the power of play. You can do that at playfulhumans.com. And there's a, an online quiz. Find out how playful you are and what your creative personality is. Playfulhumans.com slash quiz. Here we go. Don't wait for to the podcast we like to start out with a joke of the week so the joke of the week is brought to you by hand sanitizer have you touched anything literally anything use hand sanitizer uh jen shared this quote we think it's from a, a musical but 90 percent of the world are fools and the rest are in danger of contamination it sounded very appropriate for the world we're living in <laughs> these days and uh fools are not necessarily a bad thing but what do you think, Jen? Do you prefer uh, a fool over somebody that is uh, otherwise smart? Um, I'll take smart and curious all, all day long. <laughs> all right, awesome. So tell me a little bit about what you do and how you play for a living these days. Uh, such a great question. I do, I do a lot of things. And to me, that in and of itself is part of my play and creativity. Um, I'm not one of those folks who has found success in doing just one thing and staying with one thing from nine to five. Um, it's, I like multiple, multiple sources, multiple things. So one of the things that I do most at the moment is host online games and it's hilarious, it's super fun, it's silly and what has been really fascinating is watching people sign on to you know a Zoom link like completely flat affect, right? No reaction, camera off, like lucky when we get the camera on, but I'm going to mm -hmm. stay on mute. And then by the end, they're like laughing, they're being super silly. And they, there's always someone that, that comments, I didn't know how much I needed this. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what their profession is. I've worked with um, software engineers. I've worked with doctors. I've worked with teachers. I've worked with kids. And everyone says the same thing. And we're all, I mean, especially right now, so stressed out. There's so much going on. There's so much that can cause us stress that if we don't take the time to be like, and breathe and remember, remember to laugh. I mean, it, and honestly, it's yeah. hard some days to try to find something, but what if, even if it's not a laugh, a slight smile, um, something that to remind you that it's not just all doom and gloom in this world. Well, it's interesting you say that because I've been hosting virtual game shows my, myself for the last couple of months, and it has been super fun. And I think you nailed it. it it's not necessarily the environment we're in. It's not the Zoom tool that's the problem. It's that we're not just taking like five minutes to just breathe or connect human to human with the other person or think about how can we make this more fun or more creative. Yeah. I think the number one thing that's causing all adults to be way too serious and not enjoy their life enough is just being too busy and not taking yes. like a deep breath and saying, hey, what would make this next company meeting more fun. If I'm going to meet with my team or, or go on the sales call, what could we do to make it feel like a real connection and not just some business we're taking care of and checking things off the, the to-do list, right? Uh, absolutely. And in what I like to call the before times, right? Before Corona, before everything shut down, what I was so excited about with this work is that we did get to go outside and we play silly, silly, ridiculous games. And they were all, the whole purpose was get people off of their computers, get them out of the office, get them outside. I happen to live in San Diego, so we can do this outside year round. Yeah. So 
but playing silly games, interacting face to face, team building like team activities, but just being silly and having fun together and seeing each other in a different light, I think also brings a connected humanness to us all of just how silly people can be. And like, there's always the one that like, I can't believe Joe from accounting is the one doing all the silly stuff. Like, it, oh, it's it, always the one you least expect. Yeah, it's always the seriously. one you least expect. And they're hilarious and they're fun. And they're, again, they're just silly, silly games, like blowing up balloons and stuffing them in a ginormous onesie and seeing like how much of a, we call it muscle build. How much, how many muscles, how many balloons can you stuff in someone's onesie in like 60 seconds? That's so awesome. like your team is blowing up balloons, everybody else is shoving them in the thing. And like at the end, the only way, the only way to find out how many balloons is to pop them one at a time. And we make them dance in these big onesies. It's nice. hilarious. And the people, when we're like, we should have a dance off, seeing the people like, yeah, they couldn't be more ridiculous. <laughs> and it's so fun and if people aren't aware of the endorphins they're releasing the all of the good stuff that's happening chemistry wise on the inside right i mean they're just like that was fun yeah. i'm like oh but do you know what else we did <laughs> We'd raise well, right yeah. well that's what i want to talk to you a little bit about because i do feel like you're an expert in this area and you've been doing this for a while is a lot of people and maybe I think you know we stereotype as like the CEOs the owners and they're like well this is there's going to be lost productivity time so I guess we have to have a team building yeah. exercise but <laughs> all of the research points the other way that that when you take a break people come back more energized more creative more yeah. productive all these kinds of great stuff in your experience what are those benefits either tangible or intangible when teams or, or just humans go out and play I, I I think that there's there's so much and there's much more that people perhaps don't realize. I mean, we don't necessarily, we don't afterwards break down and be like, no, let's talk about the right. uh, chemical effects of what happened in your body uh, when you guys all played. So, but like knowing that feeling is is happening is, you know, is part of it. But also I think from a leadership perspective, watching how your team works together, watching how they work together. What if somebody is is really, showing up in like a play mode and you're like oh wow i never knew that so and so capable of that or i didn't i never saw that side of them and if you don't give them opportunities to do something like that you might never know you might discover something new about not only the people that you work with um, but the people who work for you if you're participating because there's always like the like oh no i'm gonna let them do it i'm just gonna watch and i'm like um, that's cool, but there's no watching yeah. in, in our games. You got to be on a team. So thanks though. Bye. <laughs> I don't want a team. <laughs> and then like all of a sudden, like, oh my God, I accidentally had fun. You know, that's, I love that what, part of it. The, the love, I love that part of it. But I also think that the part that CEOs, owner management, whatever is overlooking is that if you provide these opportunities for people to connect with the people they work with and to have fun at work, I am more excited to show up at work. I work at a fun place. I right. work at a place that like does silly games and they hire a taco truck afterwards. Like these are the perks of working here that they value this in me and they don't just go work, 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 go home. Like Well, and that's huge because the, st the stats on that are terrible that terrible. like, over 75% of people are not actively engaged in enjoying their work. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, but then their productivity is worse. Like people with right. engaged employees, the, com the company makes like twice as many profits. They have four times better uh, employee reviews and get referrals and all kinds of testimonials and um, net promoter scores and all the stuff that bosses like to measure all stem from having happy, engaged and fun employees, right? Exactly. So if you're not providing something, something social, and I think that it's real easy to do like a company happy hour, but mm -hmm. that's just people standing around at a different location now perhaps having alcohol. Like how is that really right. terribly different than what they could do in a lunchroom or something? So mm -hmm. having a, you know, I always think the games are not the goal. Games are the vehicle to get us to the goal. It's not about like, oh, I was the best 
um, tinker toy tower builder today. That it's is about amazing. like, but, we yeah. use this to get you here. Uh, I love that. And I, you've mentioned a couple. I was wondering if you have any favorite ones or like simple ones that anybody could do with their family at home or in an office uh, if people are still at an office with people. <laughs> do you have a favorite like go to just icebreaker type game? Um, is there a real easy one, a real fun one that that we do um, with, with folks is just simply passing something without using your hands like from which again oh, yeah. you might only be able to do in your current pod um, but in the before times you know holding hands or doing something and being able to pass something like whether it's like an orange from neck to neck right passing that down probably better with family probably not hr wise like good for right. a work yeah. situation but definitely with families you know passing something down the line or doing something like that timing it it's amazing to me how competitive people get not necessarily against each other but just beating a clock like if i'd be like yeah. wow and i could be working with one one team and be like you guys were able to pass that orange down the line and back in one minute i wonder if you could do it in 45 seconds whoa and i'm like what i don't you're, yeah. you're competing against nobody you're passing an orange like but the level of intensity just went up and then when they do it like the roar from getting 45 seconds <laughs> is even louder and i'm like well, there's probably no way you guys sandler there's probably no way you guys could get that under 45 right we're going for it and then you see like they're getting sillier and it's getting faster <laughs> and the intensity is going up and if you are at all paying attention, you can't help but feel the energy and the excitement in the room go up. And then again, I'm like, you know, the inner nerd in me is going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. We're releasing more endorphins. We're getting, this is more and more healthy, the more we're doing this. And again, being able, I like the, the next level of that, of being able to reflect back to people. Do you see how, how excited you got? <laughs> beating a clock passing an orange what if you brought that kind of energy and excitement into your life what if you got excited about little things you just literally went nuts passing an orange for no what point no was, awards no for, money no, <laughs> right? yeah, say, your award was this everybody at the end C could you apply a little bit more fun could you play a little bit more of a game style to anything else in your life and That's the huge. realization that you don't have to, that didn't cost any money, right? We don't have to be like, I don't know, in order for me to do something fun, I don't have the funds. I, you know, I'd, I'd go on a trip, I'd buy these things. I'd, it's not that. You have everything you need already built in. Yeah, I love uh, the, one of my new favorite quotes is it doesn't cost anything to be awesome. Uh, so you can take You can take awesome to whatever you're doing, but I heard three great things in, in there. Uh, besides that one is some ninja level gamification stuff, which is, you know, play has to be voluntary. It has to be opt-in and you're asking them, like, I, I don't suppose you could do that faster. Or I'm, I wonder it's allowing them to choose whether they do or not. They right. can easily say, Nope, we can't do it yeah. under 45. Sorry, we're done. Yeah. Uh, and that's fine. That's an okay answer. But yeah. posing it in a way that allows people to opt into a group right. experience is huge. The second right. one is um, by speeding that up. That's an old school gamification technique. If you look at the old Nintendo Atari games, like Tetris is a great example. Tetris is the same game. It just keeps getting faster and faster. And it adds right. more excitement and more challenge to it the way it works. But I mean, Mario Brothers, all the other things, you're doing the same thing. There's only so right. many things you can do. Jump, run, and, yeah. you know throw stuff or whatever, but you yeah. do it more and faster, it becomes more exciting and engaging. So I think you can think about that. Um, yeah, I, I will say that the, it, um, I used, I spent 20 years teaching summer music leadership programs to high school kids with a, a program called George Parks Drum Major Academy. And we would have, you know, up to 600 kids on a football field like passing a word to the right, another word to the left, a stop to the right, a hand thing to the left and timing it. And like, it's the same thing, like, right? Mm -hmm. Watching them get like super excited. I'm like, you, you passed a word and you got that excited, you know, but it was, but it's also reflecting back to them at the end of this, like tuning in, how does your heart feel right now? Look, it's racing with excitement. 
and you're right. like celebrating, you're high-fiving each other for the silliest of things, but also you had to work as a team to get to that score. Like we're trying to get under a minute or whatever that is, you could not have done that without effective communication, without listening skills, without communicating with each other and then working completely together. So it's, yes, on one level it's a team, team building thing, but if you just do it without pointing out to people all of the other things that went into the silliness of the game, I think you're missing a piece of it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I was also going to second what you said earlier about applying that to our regular life, that you can take these gamification principles and put them into anything. It can be, you know, you you do it with kids all the time, right? Hey, I bet right. you can't clean up these Legos uh, in under a minute, right? And right. you can do that with yourself. You can do yeah. that with your team at work. You can do it with the chores you don't like or whatever it happens to be is, again, just kind of five minutes of creativity of just give yourself a pause, a break. Right. Uh, put on a music or, or something and and think about what would actually make this fun for me. And you can yeah. gamify your whole life and really enjoy yeah. a lot, a lot greater percentage of it. Absolutely. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your career, though, because I think these are also um, interesting interviews with people that, that play for a living is. Did you ever stop playing? Was this something you were always naturally good at? Did you have a, a, a quote, real job where you got too serious and then you're like, nope, I'm going back to the fun side. There's always kind of a pendulum. What was it uh, for you and, and how did you find this in your life? Uh, really great question because it's happened more than once um, mm -hmm. in my life. I have a degree in insurance, so can already feel the excitement when super I say fun. that. Yeah, yeah right. super, super fun. Um, and when I was feeling like I wasn't, you know, like we were talking about earlier, my productivity wasn't great. I didn't love what I was doing. And I kept asking to be back into human resources because at least I could work with people and I could teach and teaching. I get to be silly when I teach. So I feel like that's one of my more effective communication styles. So, and uh, we had this thing called the internet coming out when I was an editor. Mm -hmm. So teaching some people how to use it, how to look up things. And I really enjoyed it. We'd make silly games out of it. Um, you know, like that was a natural part for me, but they kept pushing me back into underwriting. So I felt really, um, mm. I didn't like what I was doing, what I was doing. And I found dance as an outlet and dance to me, a lot, like lots of art is play, you know, music is on especially in partner dancing, it was ballroom dancing that I did, that there is, there literally, we talk about it in teaching dance. It's a play back and forth. You're playing with each other of like, of if you're leading, I'm gonna ask you to try to go this way. I, I'm gonna accept there's a play back and forth. There's no, you don't get on and put like, oh, this is the routine we do to this song. It's playing around. Did this turn work? Right. Nope. <laughs> Let's learn and do something <laughs> again. But in the end, we have fun and it's movement and it's music and it's dancing. It's all of those things. And so I ended up leaving insurance to teach ballroom dancing for a living, which was wonderful and fun until I had an injury, which ended that mm -hmm. part of my career. And I went on to create a nonprofit <clears throat> teaching dance as an adaptive therapy for wounded warriors. And it was oh, yeah. a very similar concept right of like just like i was talking about with play the goal is wasn't to ever make somebody into the next champion on dancing with the stars the goal was how can i use this vehicle of dance to get people laughing to get people making eye contact to get people to kind of you know complete change in affect and at, at the end of the hour-long class same thing reflecting back to them like do you remember that when you came into your, here you had you were a 10 out of 10 on your anxiety and now you just told me you're a two like we spent one hour listening to music and moving and laughing and joking and i'm you know i'm like in the self-deprecating humor category but being a super silly teacher that's just what comes out for me it's just kind of a natural it's how i teach i like to have fun i like to have jokes it's never serious like must do this um to reflect back to them that we just spent an hour being silly and dancing and laughing and you feel this much better how can we take this into other aspects of your life or like you don't just like with play like those games you don't we we don't have any extra equipment here 
you have music at home right you got you got oh you got a phone good play some music pull up salsa music pull, you got and, and I'm, i would say you've got two feet but i was also teaching amputees who only had one so right so don't give me your excuse of i've got two left feet i got a guy who would love to have both so yeah dance you don't need equipment you don't need you don't need anything to feel Tell me more this, about this, that project because it looked amazing and, and like you said i could imagine especially people that have to uh, readjust to their new body and circumstances or equipment and braces and yeah. other stuff that they have now that that could be really powerful and just as well as the ptsd seriousness of of life and coming back and from from yeah. war to something that's that's play and fun uh do you have a favorite you know, story from that time or, or something that you hope more people would know? Cause that, that seems like something, a mission you would want to spread to other people. Um, I will try to get through it without crying, but the story, okay, let it fly. The, the story is really how the whole thing went from a six week class to a seven and a half year charity, 24 locations throughout the U S sponsoring salsa night in Afghanistan started as a single class. And the first group of people that I was teaching were all um, combat veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan, mostly um, Marine Corps and Navy. And all of them had been fitted with a prosthetic. So in physical therapy, they were walking and, and running, but their physical therapist, the head of PT there is an incredible dancer himself um, and a really creative um, therapist. So like, they're already lucky to have someone like that who's thinking outside of the box. He loved to dance. He wanted to teach them to dance. So he asked to bring in a teacher. So I come from a military family. My, my dad was Air Force. My grandfather was Air Force. I have tons of people in my family military. So I was like, absolutely. And it's only six weeks. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I can do anything for six weeks, right? So part of my own play was how am I gonna adapt what I've been teaching for years to people that may be missing an arm? I'm used to like teaching this, this class where the, you, in order to leave the spinny, you shake your right arm and you do this. Well, this guy doesn't have a right arm. You're gonna have to adapt on the fly, but it's part of like playing with it. And I remember one time I was teaching a class and I was like, and then you're gonna switch hands behind your back and then turn and he was like, excuse me, uh, Jen, uh, <laughs> what if you don't have a hand to switch to? And I was like, you know what? Good point. Good point. Give me a second. Let me play around. And they were just so like fun and lighthearted with it that they gave me also the grace to be creative and do that too. But the best part to me and what the impetus to really blow this thing into a huge program was the final day of our six week class, a gentleman that asked if he could bring his wife to class. And I was like, wait, wait a minute. First of all, we've been five weeks and I've been searching for partners every single week, searching for volunteers. And you've had a built-in partner this entire time. <laughs> I know, but I wanted to get better before, you know, I wanted to know what I was doing. Oh, I don't yeah. to embarrass myself. And I was like, all right, all right. I was like, of course she can come. So she shows up in class, like hair done, makeup done, she's got the kids, like they are ready. And this is like 1230 on like a Wednesday afternoon, right? It's, but she's dressed and she is beaming. And I'm already like, already she has picked the energy in the room up just by her presence, right? And seeing them laughing and being silly together and playing around with the music and just like, you can see the magic that's already happening between them. And then there's these three little kids, like six years and under going, daddy, daddy, daddy. And nice. so I'm almost outside of my own body watching what's happening you know here's these kids who their dad has a metal leg now and it's for all that they're going to grow up thinking that that's normal and that's great and they're seeing this healthy relationship between mom and dad right now this is so amazing this is a, a mom and dad a husband and wife who are dancing and laughing this is amazing and then she took it to another level when at the end of class she came to me crying and I panicked because I thought, oh my God, I messed up his leg. Um, <laughs> and she said, I haven't danced with him since our wedding. And he's had so many surgeries on his legs. I didn't know if he would ever walk again, let alone dance. And 
no one has asked me to be part of his therapy. I drive him to his appointments. I sit and I wait for him. But today I got to be there for him and with him. And you can, I mean, this was 11 years ago and I'm still yeah. teary about it. It's huge. Um, it was this like huge, again, like the, the world seemed to completely slow down as my brain was going, you got to take note of this. This is so much more than physical therapy. Oh my God, what else could we do? How else could we expand this? And this is your last day here. And I was like, can I come back for another six weeks? And they're like, we don't have funding. And I'm like, I don't care. I didn't ask you anything about money. Can I come back next week? They're like, keep coming as long as you want. We can't, we're not going to pay you. <laughs> like, <laughs> cool. I will figure that part out but I need to be, be, be here. I need to do this again. I'm like, we are just barely scratching the surface of what's possible. Cause yes, being fitted with their new prosthetics, being able to move and turn and all, all there's tremendous physical therapy benefits that are happening here, let alone just like the cardio of it. Right. But with someone with a traumatic brain injury, being able to memorize a series of dance steps, being able to execute those steps, being able to execute those steps while in a conversation, while listening to music, while staying in time. Like those are really, there's so many brain functions happening at once just to do that simple, that one, what we call simple thing. Someone mm -hmm. with post-traumatic stress who's having someone trouble making eye contact or you know, feeling isolated, um, feeling depressed, feeling withdrawn from their community, from anybody around them. Again, like you said earlier, I'm not, I'm not forcing them to participate. They're showing up, but I, it's my responsibility to create a fun, safe environment for them where they do feel safe to literally take that first step and to see them come out of, of their shell, to see them crack a joke, to see them having yeah. fun, to see them laughing. And then to, again, at the end of class to reflect back to them, like that, that was you, you did that. And I think an amazing piece of what, you know, ha just happened to, to occur is that we were teaching these classes in an aerobics room where, you know, we're facing a wall of mirrors. Mm. And one of the other therapists reflected back to me, all puns intended reflected, um, that, that we were probably not even aware of how important it was to have them see themselves doing the thing. You know, part of dance classes, um, anywhere you go in partner classes, usually we always start everybody facing the same direction, learning the footwork on your own before you put it with partners. So part of that was everybody facing the mirror, mostly so they could see my feet, they could catch the reflection of it. But also when you looked around, everybody was watching themselves. So to be able to yeah. see yourself doing the thing, probably on a subconscious level, like the brain is logging in, I can do this you know, and leaving people. Well, they've used that it. with missing limbs and, and stuff too, haven't they? Where it's just like, it's important for your brain to know that it's not there anymore and that things yeah. are, are different and, and yeah. stuff. So you're, I mean, you're right. I mean, that's so huge. I really appreciate you sharing that story again with us. And it's so powerful that I think it doesn't uh, leave us much place to go. So we're going to stop and play some games and just uh, say that we nailed it and change gears. But nailed it. I wanted to echo that because it is powerful in dramatic situations like that, but I think sometimes then people put that stuff in a box and they go, oh, well, sure, therapy is good for somebody that's had trauma or uh, play is good for kids because they they need to get out there and have fun and we don't want them playing, you know, uh, computer games or stuck, you know, sitting too close to the television and stuff. And right. I always think, well, what about adults? What about you? Imagine how powerful it would be for you if you're just having a crappy day. Uh, yeah, to go absolutely. and dance for five minutes. You don't have to yeah. wait for a trauma in order to use play to make your life better, right? Yeah. I mean, this is what I love about TikTok. I resisted TikTok for the longest <laughs> time until I saw an elderly couple just filming themselves dancing and being silly. And I was like, ah, oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. You don't have to, you don't have to, des you do nothing to deserve play. It's you deserve to play because you're here. That's it. Yeah, I love that. And it doesn't just work when you're unhappy or in, in trauma or set. It works all of the time. If you're all happy, that's a great time to play too. So yeah. I think, you know, use it all the time and that's great, which we can do right now. So it's time to play a game. Again, Jen, you don't have to, it's completely up to you. But if you play the game, I'll give your podcast special promotion in the Playful Humans Clubhouse on the website in the, the club area. Um, 
So what is it? Would you like to get weird or walk away? Weird, 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 weird. <laughs> All right, here you go. We're going to spin the wheel, see which game you land on. There's 10 right. on the wheel. Hey. And we got... The Whisper Challenge. The Whisper oh. Challenge is your game. Uh, this is for everybody that's been on Zoom and had the person talking without the volume on. What we're going to try and do is decode the message. So I'll go first. Okay. I'm going to put myself on mute. Okay. Say uh, a sentence. You see how many uh, <laughs> words you can get right. I made Perfect. this kind of difficult, but oh, thanks, hopefully, thanks. Uh, hopefully you can get something. Here we go. Okay. All right. What do you, Ralph you get? Macchio is karate. Oh, so close. You got three out of five words correct. Three yeah. is a great score. Ralph <laughs> Macchio is eating macaroni, uh, is what I said. Um, so it's your turn now. All right. Uh, okay. Go ahead and hit mute and say something. Let's see if I can beat three. All right. Here we go. Oh man, I think I got the poem. I don't know the rest of it. The rain in Spain is mainly in the plains. Good enough. I'll take it. Nice. Well All right. Got it. See, uh, well, yeah, when you use a sentence, everybody knows that works. I really appreciate you for playing and you were already a winner just for having the guts to play. So thank you much for doing that, uh, Jen. Hope you had fun on the podcast. Absolutely. You can find Jen at jenables.com. Uh, coaching, consulting, cool play. You mentioned dance, uh, games, online, whatever you got. Go check out jenables.com. And if you want a little more fun, flow, and fulfillment in your life, check out the Playful Humans at playfulhumans.com. There's also that personality quiz. So find out whether you're a, a storyteller or a competitor or a, a director, an athlete, check it out, playfulhumans.com slash quiz. Until next time, if you can't be good, be good at it. That's what I always say. Don't wait for tomorrow. Live for today. Keep on chasing the sun. Bye, everybody.